Hey there, YouTubes. This is Grimweird coming back at you with more MC Eternal Mod Pack playthrough action for Minecraft 1.12.2. And today we're going to uh, go ahead and set up the Nuclear Craft Fusion Reactor. So, um, a few things about it. The main part of the beast is this 3x3x3 fusion core, uh, which has uh, little spots in the middle of each side for spacers to come out. Uh, this is how you make your toroid the uh, outside uh, channel which your plasma goes through bigger and the bigger the toroid the more power you get you can sort of access this core uh, for putting in fuel uh, taking out byproducts uh, taking out power etc you can sort of access it from any surface really other than the of course the uh, where your connectors are um, but if you want to really tick accelerate it or do anything to it, that is this sort of bottom middle one. Um, and so that's why I like to, one of the reasons I like to keep it sort of up on blocks. I obviously don't need to have uh, blocks under it. Uh, I just think it looks nicer if I support it a little. Same thing with the toroid. You can have the toroid floating, but I think it looks nicer with a little support. Um, but I also like to not only keep it up a couple in the air for um, accessing this if I need to do any tick acceleration, which I don't. It's a little dangerous to get carried away with tick acceleration on this bad boy, uh, but I have done it. Um, and then the other reason is that I like to be able to just sort of run under the toroid. So having it a couple up in the air uh, lets me move around as I'm making it and as I'm igniting it. And then as I'm working on the cooling of it. Um, as for size, um, this is one that is, it's going to be a size uh, 4 toroid, I believe is how the uh, thing goes. Which is basically going to be uh, 3 spacers plus the, uh, 3 spacers plus the ring. Um, so a size 1, you would just have the ring start right here with no spacers. Um, and then each spacer adds a size to it. So I think this is going to qualify as a size 4. Um, and so uh, this just happens to be the uh, biggest size that fits into a single chunk. Um, so you can see here that uh, it's going to end up being about a 15 by 15 um, footprint. If we go from the outside edge here uh, all the way to the uh, other quarters. And so it'll barely fit into a chunk all by itself. Now, do you need to keep it all in one chunk? No, probably not. It's just my, it's my uh, bias to do it that way. From back in the day when chunk loading wasn't a thing, uh, I try to always keep things sort of in chunks together and uh, I try to keep any kind of multi-block structure uh, all in the same chunk. Uh, these days a lot of mods uh, aren't so concerned about that so it's less of a concern uh, or they don't stop working and of course we've also got chunk loading and stuff uh, available to us so it's all just a, a lot less of a concern but it's just sort of a habit and sort of a best practice if you will uh, that I've gotten into from playing back in the old days. So we're going to go ahead and finish the inside of the uh, toroid here. Another handy thing about this size, I can't remember if I mentioned it already, but it takes uh, three stacks of fusion electromagnets. Uh, either the transparent ones or the non-transparent ones. Um, so three stacks is just easy to remember. Um, every additional size requires another 32 electromagnets. Uh, and that would be uh, basically four. You need to insert four electromagnets here and then four across from it. And then four here and four across from it, uh, etc. Um, so you end up basically uh, spending uh, another 8 times 4, uh, 32 electromagnets to expand the ring. Um, 
uh, basically one out in that direction, one out in that direction, one out, basically one out on the diagonal um, of the core. And so uh, if I wanted to make this one size bigger, uh, I would need uh, four more connectors and 32 more electromagnets. Let's see, I need a, oops. Let's go ahead and get the top of our toroid started. So one thing is, you know, I'm addicted to these uh, cave illuminators from uh, from uh, Astral Sorcery. I want to make sure that I don't have any of these little light sources inside my toroid. Uh, so you can sort of see here, we're going to have this uh, this uh, one by one block channel that sort of runs through the middle here, and that's where your plasma forms. Uh, so we want to try and make sure we don't have any of those forming inside of our uh, reactor toroid. All right, so now the top of our toroid's done. And now we need the outside. And so there we're going to have the thing. It's a little hard to see in the transparency, but we're going to have this little racetrack uh, one by one going along the inside of here for our plasma to form. So I'll run this all around the outside here. Again, I don't want any uh, lights to form inside my ring. So we'll go ahead and uh, light accordingly. So my cave illuminator doesn't do anything annoying to me. It's a little hard to see what you're doing here, especially on the corners uh, when you're using all transparent um, ones. I've seen other people, they do things like, you know, have like the bottom ring be non-transparent. Um, that's something I've been tempted to do. We can turn off the uh, chunk boundaries here. But there we go. We have a thing. Um, you got to make sure that you also have your channel going through the corners too. So if I screw up placement, um, it's usually because I've got the quarter screwed up. Um, all right, we've got a fusion reactor. So if you've got this all set up all right, it'll say, you know, fusion reactor, like e-magnet's not powered, and it's not doing anything, and etc. So that is all good to go. This is our structure. So now what we've got to do is we've got to get fuel in it and we've got to power up the electromagnets. So I have got I can't remember off the top of my head what I did because I did this a few days back but let's see Alright, so I have um, looks like quite a few buckets. I didn't realize I had quite that many buckets, but um, it looks like I have uh, almost 4,400 buckets of hydrogen. We're going to start with a hydrogen-hydrogen um, situation. Um, if we look at fuels, mod options, nuclear craft, config, fusion configs, so one of the reasons I'm not 100% sure what kind of power this gonna, is going to do is because I think the power generation multipliers and fuel use, fuel use multipliers were um, changed in the uh, Enigmatica 2 expert mod pack. Um, and so what I'm used to is not going to be what I get because these are default, I think, 
um, yeah, default for fuel use and power gen. Um, here you can see the minimum toroid size and maximum toroid size. Uh, minimum is 1, uh, max is 24. We're going to be doing a 4. Um, electromagnetic power. RFs per second required to keep an electromagnetic electromagnet active. And we're at default, uh, but that default might be a bit higher than I expect. Um, this is a little concerning because, let's see, I've got uh, 64 times 4,000. We're going to take hundreds of thousands of power to keep our electromagnetics uh, active, our electro electromagnets active. So I'm a little bit worried about that. We'll see what it looks like uh, once we get things started. Um, let's see, fusion fuel combo durations. So these are um, how many ticks a fuel combo lasts. So, um, and then you can see that it's got an order. So HH is hydrogen, hydrogen. HD is hydrogen, deuterium. HT is hydrogen, uh, tritium, I believe. You've got hydrogen, helium-3, hydrogen, lithium-6, etc. Um, in the past, I have a tendency to use deuterium, deuterium which is the eighth one in the list, D slash D. Um, and here that's going to be 200 uh, ticks before a, a, a unit of fuel is used. Um, the hydrogen hydrogen is actually going to burn faster at 100. Um, so we are going to be burning through some, um, some hydrogen pretty quick. So we might need to make more electrolyzers to, get, uh, to keep this thing fueled. Um, and then fusion fuel combo power gen. Um, you can see it says 442 for hydrogen hydrogen uh, versus 507 for uh, deuterium deuterium. So deuterium deuterium would be uh, getting us some more power um, and it would last longer. So we'd be going through less fuel. Um, however, the reason I'm going to start with hydrogen hydrogen is one, it's simpler to make. Um, and then two, um, if we look at fusion fuel combo radiation, which I haven't had to deal with before, um, since I'm sort of new to playing with nuclear craft turned on, in Enigmatica 2 Expert, the default was off and I just left it off. Um, but uh, the hydrogen hydrogen is defaulting to, to the negative nine um, for how much... Uh, it uh, is generating in radiation, whereas I believe, uh, let's see, one, two, three, four, deuterium, deuterium is to the negative four. Um, so deuterium, deuterium creates a lot more radiation than hydrogen, hydrogen. So I just want to get a feel for what the radiation looks like with um, hydrogen first. Um, and it's a simpler fuel to make. Um, so we got a bunch of it. It's on um, magenta, magenta. So here's my other magenta, white magenta. So let's teleport back to our fusion room. And let's set this up. You can pretty much put this anywhere here. Um, you can see nothing is going in yet. However, if I set this to output, I think it will go in, yes. So orange up makes this output through the bottom. Uh, now whether or not it reacts with the blocks it's uh, up against sometimes varies. However, you can get away with um, doing this without any tubes. If we look at these little things over here, prevent input overflow. Input overflow is what we have happening here. So we've filled up the first tank with hydrogen and now it's overflowing in the second tank. If I wanted to do a mixture of two types of fuels, uh, you can see here we're going to be doing this hydrogen hydrogen uh, and the different colors are just the different um, uh, flavors of liquid hydrogen. 
Um, but uh, if I wanted to do something where we were doing hydrogen deuterium, if I put it in there and I was loading up hydrogen, I'd want to make sure to uh, uh, push this button uh, to prevent input overflow and then hook up my deuterium to do the second take. Void leftover fluids. Uh, that, I think, is just a one-time click to, uh, like if I say, decided that I now had a bunch of deuterium and I wanted to switch to deuterium, deuterium, I could push this button and it would uh, void the tanks. Um, and then I could go, uh, then I could hook up my deuterium f fuel. Um, void output overflow. So these are your four output takes. Um, so we're going to, oh, pardon me, phone call. Okay, so um, we're going to be generating basically just uh, four buckets of, or I should say four tanks worth of deuterium. Um, so it's all going to be deuterium, and we are going to pump that deuterium out and save it in a gargantuan drum um, in case we uh, decide to switch over to a deuterium-based um, fuel for our uh, second generator or not. Probably not. I just don't think I'm going to need that much power. I think, in fact, I already have sort of all the power I need. I'm just making this now um, because I have all the stuff for it, so I might as well. Um, so that's what this last button is, and this just uh, changes the colors for when this is up and running. There are some colors here that show temperature and yada yada, and that just changes what those look like a bit. So that's what the four buttons do. Um, so right now we are fueled up, we are all good to go, except we need to um, fire up our rings which is sort of the uh, first tricky part, actually the second tricky part. When it comes to making these, usually the first tricky part is making a bunch of calcium sulfate that you need for the recipe because you have to sort of go through the whole um, calcium sulfate production thing um, to make the stuff. And then the second tricky part is powering up your electromagnets. So how many uh, flux points do I have on me? Uh, 31. That should do it. So a couple of episodes ago I showed that I've uh, made an induction matrix. We've now got uh, 76.8 billion RF um, saved in this bad boy. Uh, so that is good. And we... Uh, I'm going to go ahead and turn on my energetic generator again. So it is out of pearls, but if I go extract always active, now you can see the little swirl of uh, an inner pearl spinning in circles being teleported from one energetic uh, generator to the next. Um, and as it does that, it makes power. I'm going to pull out my uh, smart wrench from RF Tools and uh, just verify that this thing is working and working right. What we want to see is last pearl at 10, yes. Lost RF lost to zero, yes. And when a pearl's been spinning for a bit, we want to see RF per tick up around 6912. Now obviously when a, a pearl uh, gets discarded, as it does every once in a while to simulate fuel loss, um, the RF per tick is going to come down, uh, but 69.12 is the peak for when pearls are uh, going full blast. Um, oops. I keep forgetting I don't have the sort of hold jump uh, from squid ring to go up. So last pearl at 10, RF lost 0, looks good. Uh, last pearl at 10, RF lost 0. And last pearl at 10, RF lost to zero. And make sure that I've got. All right, so we've got inner pearls going out and coming in, going out and coming in. So we are all good to go there. Because we are about to drain a ton of power out of our induction matrix to try and boot this bad boy up. In fact, 
I don't really think I need this going at the moment. So the main, uh, the only main power drain I have right at the moment are these laser drills. Uh, they're draining, I don't know, maybe about a thousand or 900. So I've got that power. We'll turn that off, see where we're at here. So now output is down around 500 from 1400 something. Um, this 500 I think is mostly just my uh, ME system. So we're going to let that go. But now our net should be uh, tens of thousands coming in, which should help us as we try to power up this fusion reactor. So let's diddy bop over here again and So what we've got going on here is, now you can power this however you want, uh, but basically you want to apply power to the top ring, the inside ring, the outside ring, and the bottom ring. And your guy's not going to fire up until all of these red lines turn green. And if we just do one here real quick. So now you can see it turning green, and you can see that green sort of spread out uh, from the power source. So this sort of gives you a feel for how many points of power. Now you can run wires. You don't need to do wireless. You can have wires run along here. Um, I tend to sort of like to space them out. If we look at, if I focus on this and look at my top left cool, uh, tool tip, um, I'm at... 256,000 FE, but then when I come over here, now I'm down around 180 to 218, and now I'm down further, and down further, uh, and we're just hosing power, so I should probably start moving a bit faster, uh, but let's go ahead and uh, spin it, and we're just going to go in a little circle here and set these up And these seem to be taking a heck of a lot more power to set up than they, uh, than they did in Enigmatica 2 Expert. I should compare and contrast config files to sort of see how that's different. And we'll throw one more on here for good measure. Alright, so now our top ring and our outside ring are both going full blast. And while one part of me says I should hurry up and get this thing ignited ASAP because I'm just hosing power into the void, another part of me just wants to see how badly I'm hosing power into the void. Um, oh, hey, we're keeping up. Okay, so that is good, and I think if we go um, electromagnets, if we mouse over these, I think once you get them filled up, um, it says it requires 200 RF per tick to stay active. So that's a stack and a half, so that's uh, 64 and 32 is 96, so roughly 100. Um, so we're doing... Uh, 20,000 RF tick per tick currently, maybe roughly, um, to uh, keep those things powered. Uh, and that means when I do the other two rings, we'll be up to uh, 30 some thousand 
RF protect to keep my electromagnets um, powered. And I should be getting more than that in from my uh, endergenic generators. So that should be uh, good. It's hard to get a good feel for exactly what these are doing uh, since, they, uh, since they aren't consistent. There is a bit of lag, so this pearl's going and going and going. So I know I'm getting about uh, 70-some thousand RF per tick now from the 11 guys, but now here, that pearl was discarded, and there is a couple second pause until the next pearl gets up and running. And you can have little runs where a pearl dies early, uh, two or three times in a row. Like, uh, that one didn't last anywhere near as long. Um, so it's... I'm not really 100% sure what I'm getting out of that. But I think it's going to be... Um, I think that overall, my energetic generator is going to be enough to keep up with uh, powering all my electromagnets. So that is a lovely thing, because that makes me worry a lot less about firing this bad boy up. So the top ring and the outside ring are all green and all good. And uh, you can sort of uh, get a feel for how things are going by, uh, by mousing over them. Um, so you can see this one is a couple away from each power point, but it's still got 200 and some odd thousand FE in it. Um, and so I don't have any that are in danger of turning red. Um, yeah, everything looks absolutely good. So we've probably got a bit of overkill on how many flux points I'm using, but the flux points are pretty cheap, so I'm not that worried about it. So now we want to get the uh, inside ring and the bottom ring. So we're going to go ahead and uh, might as well start here in the middle. Spend it. And then one, two, three, let's do it about here. And again, this is a bit overkill on the flux points, but they're cheap and I made a bunch of them, so ain't no thing. And you can do this however you want to do it. You can uh, throw energy uh, cubes in there. Uh, since this is an RF tool, or you, you can use those RF tools, uh, power cells, uh, however you want to do it. You can use uh, any kind of wires or cables to spread it. Uh, just sort of whatever, uh, if you're doing MC Eternal, um, you can see that when they first fire up, uh, they're going to suck down a lot of storage, 256,000 FE. Um, so that's the first thing to keep in mind. And then once they are filled up, they're going to use that 200 RF per tick. So that's just sort of where you need to keep your head for um, what kind of power you need to fire this bad boy up. All right, so now everything is green, everything should be stable, everything should be powered all the heck. And again, just for my own personal curiosity, I want to make sure that my energetics are keeping up with that. And yes, they are. So if I look at uh, the input, um, well, that's how much is coming out. Let's see. Things are uh, taking a bit of a mess because <laughs> nothing is consistent power right now. Neither my input nor my output is consistent power really at the moment. Uh, so everything is sort of waggling. But the bottom line is uh, we are good to go. The input is... Uh, is covering our output. Uh, let's go ahead and teleport back there. All 
All right, so now uh, we have an, a functional reactor, and I was right, toroid size four. So one would be no spacers, and then this is two, three, four with the three spacers. And you count it basically from core to ring. So it's one, two, three, and then the ring starts here, four. Uh, so now we are good to go. Uh, so now you need to apply a bit of power to the reactor to start its heaters going up. So our electromagnets are basically just for containing the plasma once a plasma ignites. Um, so those are all good, steady, ready to roll. Uh, but now we have to actually go through the generation of a plasma. And for that, we're going to pump a bunch of power into uh, heating up our fusion core. And as that temperature rises, uh, we'll start to see... Uh, we'll start to see, I think, maybe when it hits well. Let's just find out. So again, we're going to use uh, flux point. Gonna do spin it, and we're gonna disable the limit. And now we're pumping some real power in there. Now it's cooking up, cooking up to 8,000. Boom! And when it hits 8,000, we are now igniting. And you can hear a nice pleasant hum. I have the power, or the sound turned down, but now you can see the uh, the plasma is in our channel, our toroid channel. Uh, temperature is going up nicely. We're starting to use fuel. Uh, we're starting to generate uh, uh, deuterium, which means I need to prepare to deal with that. Do I have a gargantuan tub for ready? Gargantuan, no. There's one. So that's going to be our output. Um, I also need to be keeping an eye on my um, hydrogen use. Uh, let's go ahead and set this up real quick. Uh, where do I want this? I think around the back side, right about here would be good. Uh, then we'll... Sorry, I got so excited about igniting it that I didn't actually prepare for what happens when it ignites it. Uh, we dumped a ton of power into that heater, so we ignited it real quick. Uh, what am I after here? I am after a fluid conduit. So we'll put that there. Alright, so now this is filling up with deuterium. Now, if these tanks get full and you are not voiding output overflow, your heater shall turn off and you'll start to lose temperature and start to lose power. Uh, so that's no, no good. Uh, so now that's going, and so now we got to go check on how, fastly we're, how fast we are burning through uh, hydrogen and how much hydrogen we have. And we are burning through hydrogen pretty darn fast. So we need to extract, always active. All right, so that's filling up, that's filling up, that's filling up. And we're still burning through hydrogen. Right, so now we need to, uh, I find that about, uh, I don't know, maybe around 25 or so of the uh, speed upgrades for nuclear craft is about as much as I want to put in after that. You're better off just building more machines and maybe actually sooner than that. Um, let's go nuclear craft. Um, I do have a bunch of energy and speed upgrades available.
Um, so let's go ahead and uh, how much do I want to do? Let's start with 20 and 20. And I should always remember to uh, put the energy ones in first. Uh, the energies only count as high as the... Uh, so this really only counts as five energy upgrades. Uh, but if you put them in first, then you're sort of prepared for uh, putting in those. Yeah, let's see... Throw those in, those in. All right, so now we've got uh, three electrolytic separ separators, or electrolyzers, they're called here. Um, nuclear craft, making that. So now what's our uh, burn on hydrogen look like? We are still burning through hydrogen pretty darn fast. So we are probably going to need um, I'm thinking at least twice that many. Oops. And I think I left that recipe in here because I thought I would probably need more. And apparently I did not. Electrolyzer. So we'll grab another one of these and throw that in here under our molecular assemblers. Um, I can take out that and that, that. With my electrolyzer. And let's make three more. And that means I'm going to want also uh, about 61 more each of the. Uh, cannot type nuclear. That means I'm going to want about 61 each more of these. Oops. Those are building. Let's throw these in place. Uh, oops, I didn't actually pull them out. Uh, electrolyzers. There's one. What's the hold up here? Hold up is tough alloy. Oops, that's not what I wanted. Where are those being made? They must be done already. Yes, we are done. And we're done with those. Now it's not the end, well, it's, it's a pain in the ass if I don't get all this figured out before uh, we run out of fuel, which we're not gonna. We're, uh, we still have 3,600 buckets. So we got time here. Uh, Bottom line is, if I didn't get this all figured out before, and uh, if it runs out of fuel, it's just going to cool down. Uh, now, where things get nasty 
is if you don't power your electromagnets. If you run out of power to your electromagnets, uh, that's a problem. So we're still, uh, when pearls are running, we're still at 79.2 per tick, and our output is spraying all over the place from 10,000 to 70 some thousand. So we're still doing fine there. So basically, I have all the time in the world to work all this out as long as I don't um, lose containment with my electromagnets. Uh, which is why I build the endogenic generators, um, or unless I overheat. That's the other thing that can be a problem. But we don't have to worry about overheating quite yet. It takes a while for these electro or these uh, nuclear cores to heat up. Right, so let's get power towards our here. Let's get out a wrench. I'm going to keep all this separate from the other stuff for the moment. Uh, we need to fill them with water. water and they are starting to do their thing so that's cool let's go pick up our uh, energy upgrades there's those and we want to do Twenty of those and twenty of those. That speeds that up to a reasonable rate. And again, how many uh, how many upgrades you put in versus how many machines you make? It's just sort of a play it by ear kind of situation. They become less efficient with power um, the more you dump. Um, upgrades into them but then again uh, we're gonna have to all the power in the world um, but actually it's not like the upgrades are free to craft either so in this particular mod pack uh, you're probably better off making a bigger bank of uh, electrolyzers and relying less on okay, I got that one already and relying less on upgrades In the past, I tend to not go too far over about uh, about 25-ish or so. And let's see, one, two, three. Alright, so all those guys are now cooking at a reasonable rate. Um, so now where are we at here? We are still losing ground. But much slower now, so that's good. So now we just got to decide. Let's jack uh, each of these guys up. Um, let's see how many do I have now? One, two, three, four, five, six. They still don't seem to be moving that fast, so I'm going to put another 10 upgrades in each. And then decide what I want to do from there. So the other thing I want to watch is I need to go see how fastly we're making deuterium. Make sure I don't run out of storage there. I did put a gargantuan drum on it. 
Uh, so that should probably be fine for now. Ooh, and I'm running out of gold. Craft. Uh, that should be enough of that. We're suddenly having a gold crisis here. See if I got any in here. Uh, not much. See if I got any over here. Eh, not much. Sort of the next thing I need to do is uh, change over my laser miner to yellow lenses to try and get some gold. Been running a bit short on gold lately. There's some more speed. Faster crushing of quartz, please. Actually, now that I think of it, it's probably the extract more than it is the crushing. coming from quartz pulverizer oh this guy Again, um, we're down under 3,000 barrels of hydrogen now, so still not a case to worry, but uh, still sort of want to keep moving on getting my fuel organized here. Uh, so let's see, where did I leave off? We got 30 and 30. Uh, 30 and 30. 30 and 30. Oops, and uh, I probably need to on these new guys. Oh no, they're not extracting. <laughs> Extract always active. That would help. That would help a lot. Hey, and uh, that does help. Let's see, where are we at now? Those are good. Those are good. All right, so we could still probably use some more. Alright, so now we're up to six of these with 30 and 30. And we're still losing steam. Just make sure that everything is acting the way it's supposed to. So 
these two drums are collecting the other products out of here. Um, so we got oxygen and deuterium. Those are a long way from filling up. Hydrogen is what's made the fastest. Uh, but what I'll need to do is make sure that, uh, come back and make sure that uh, I avoid any extra. But I don't think I have to worry about that quite yet. Um, so this is doing its thing. And doing its thing and doing its thing. It's doing its thing. All right, so everything's good here, and we are still dropping. So we're going to need to throw in more. And you know what? Let's stop messing around. Let's make a bunch more. I'm almost out of gold, so I can't really upgrade them a lot. Uh, but I'm going to go ahead and make six more. And while those are cooking, let's go check on the other side of everything. See what's going on over in our fusion reactor. Alright, so the temperature is rising. That's good. It's full of energy. That's good. It's now up to generating um, 14,000 RF per tick, which is just baby steps compared to where it's going to end up. It's only at 8% efficiency. Uh, but that sort of gives us a feel for we're going to make at least 10 times that. Um, fuel is kick keeping up there, so that's good. The deuterium is going into our byproducts tank and we are all the way up to a thousand buckets of deuterium already so I might have to add additional storage to that after it runs a while um, let's take a look at our recipe here our base max power is 44,200 RF per tick um, I'm not sure what toroid 4 means for that. Does that mean we're going to be making four times that? I don't know. I haven't actually figured out what all that means. But its optimal temperature is going to be 4430... 4430 millikelvin. Um, and we are at 1290. So we need that temperature to go up. Um another two or three times what it's currently at but we're getting there so right now we're still just stressing over the hydrogen uh, power we are eating a little into our power now with all those electrolyzers but we aren't pulling any power out of the um, the uh, nuclear Reactor core. <coughs> Reactor core quite yet. Pardon me, I have to clear my throat. All right, so where are we at here? Almost done. That tough alloy takes a bit to make, apparently. Can't even remember where I'm making that. I'm making that here, and I don't have a ton of upgrades in it, so that's okay. Okay, we got six more of these. 
Gonna need some more fluid conduits, I think. Let those cook. I should say it's not hugely surprising that I need to add all of this capacity. Um, when I make a roughly the size one of a uh, um, deuterium, deuterium one, I end up making like, I don't know, something like 20 or 30 uh, uh, hydrogen or uh, heavy water pumps for mechanism. Um, and I have quite a bit going on when I make those as well. So. It's not too shocking to me that I needed uh, to add a lot of capability. That's sort of why I sort of let this, uh, the electrolyzers I did have, I let them run quite a bit and build up a decent stockpile of um, hydrogen uh, to give me a feel for what I was going to need. All right, so where are we at now with these guys? These guys are getting water and power, water and power, water and power. All right, so all that stuff looks good. We're going to set them all to extract. And now we need to, I think I'm going to pause here and because uh, I need to do some scrounging around. First off, I'm not sure what our runtime is at currently, but I need to do some scrounging around. I think I have some other gold somewhere. Uh, so I need to scrounge around for some gold and I need to uh, make some more exp uh, expansions. And also so you guys sort of get the feel of what I'm doing here. So right now we're just going to keep adding uh, hydrogen. Uh, production um, until we offset our hydrogen uh, fuel usage um, so I will be back in a moment when I have that all sorted be right back all right we are back and I sort of have my hydrogen production under control um, so we ended up with about 20 of these electrolyzers uh, each of them with 25 and 25 for the uh, speed and energy upgrades um, and now we are running a nice surplus on hydrogen um, so we're at 319, uh, three sort of ebbs and flows, but uh, the overall trend is definitely going up. There's 320, or I should say 3,200 buckets. Um, and that's been uh, going up nicely. Let's see, 3,200... And 10, can I get a 10? There we go. So that's going nicely. Um, I don't have any overflow yet on any of my other buckets here. Um, so that's all going good. And again, we've got uh, one sink feeding into all of this. Um, I did sort of change the wiring around a bit just because it was getting frustrating as I added and subtracted, keeping track of where all my ender things were going, and it was just sort of annoying me. Um, so we have one sink feeding water to all 20, and that seems to be working fine. Um, and then we've got uh, all of them feeding back around into these three uh, for the products of the electrolysis. We've got the uh, hydrogen, which is uh, ender tanked over to our plant nuclear reactor. Um, and then we've got the uh, deuterium, which we are saving because we probably will upgrade the fuel um, or possibly use that as a, in a second reactor. Uh, and then we've got uh, oxygen, which uh, we may start voiding if we, when we get to the top of that drum. I don't think we have any use for oxygen right at the moment anymore. 
um, but we have it in case in case we need it. Um, and then I just uh, ran the power. I was running also into a problem of uh, these uh, conduits here can hold 20,000 per tick. Um, and so they didn't want to deal with like <laughs> all of these. So um, I split them up into a set of conduits only handling uh, five at a time just to make sure I didn't chug anything. Um, from conduits throttling the power getting to my uh, electrolyzers. Over here we can see that we I still haven't pulled any power out of the uh, generator, um, but we are mostly keeping up with things just with our endergenic generator, um, and that's uh, basically taking care of powering all of this hydrogen um, and also the electromagnets and the ME system. Um, on the whole, this is turning out to be not anywhere near as effective as it was in Enigmatica 2 Expert, uh, mostly because I think the config settings are uh, different enough, and I'm using hydrogen hydrogen instead of um, deuterium deuterium. Uh, you can see my efficiency up to, is up to 91%, and we're up to um, 161,000 RF per tick power generation. Um, that is nowhere near the uh, you know couple million I was hoping for, um, so that's uh, eh, sort of mediocre. But again, we're using probably the worst fuel at this point, um, so I just might have to if I get a wild hair, uh, I might have to uh, you know look into better fuel and uh, more efficient fuel generation cost. Um, since we are probably, you know, spending 20, 30,000 RF per tick just to make hydrogen, uh, we're only going to be netting, you know, 100 and some odd thousand um, RF per tick from this system, which isn't too bad. But then again, I've also sunk a lot of mats into this, so it's not too good either. So that's what you get when you use the uh, lowest tier of, uh, of fuel. Uh, but if you look down in the bottom uh, right side, we're at 9 uh, nanorads per tick. Um, so that is not horrible. That is one of the reasons I used this, was just to uh, see what kind of uh, radiation we were going to get. And uh, this nanorads makes sense. Let's take a look. Nuclear craft. Config. Fusion configs. Uh, fuel combo radiations. Uh, I would expect like something around five um, per tick, five nanorads per tick, and we're at nine nanorads per tick. So yeah, that sounds about right, um, and that's not bad at all. Um, it would take hardly no scrubbing to get rid of that. In fact, I could probably ignore this for a lot of time before this chunk became a problem. So we're at 91% efficiency, um, we're at 3600 uh, mega kelvin or whatever you want to call that. Um, if we look at mouse over this arrow you can see that 4430 is the uh, target number. So we need to start watching and uh, preparing for some active cooling. So I've got some active fluid coolers here, some infinite water sources here. Um, I already showed you I have my, here I have an ender tank um, full of molten resonant ender, which it uh, cools very nicely, uh, way better than water. So what we can do is we can uh, use basically probably one or two active coolers fed with, uh, with resonant ender fluid. Uh, to get the bulk of the cooling we need done, and then we can use uh, water to fine-tune it. Uh, so I'm going to go ahead and pause again, and we're going to wait until this gets to about 99% efficiency, and then we'll start uh, building up some active cooling. Be right back. So while we're waiting for this thing to uh, top off to around 100% efficiency, I should talk about uh, taking power into and out of this thing. So if you'll recall, we slapped this flux point on there 
um, to provide this thing heating power to get up to its initial um, ignition point. Um, you can see if we click on this, it's not outputting anymore. So technically we don't need this on here. Um, it is using its own power to keep itself heated. Um, so this power that it's generating here is minus whatever it takes to keep it heated. And it does have a small, um, actually it's not small at all, it has a really pretty decent sized uh, energy buffer that it will keep on hand. Um, but if we take a look at pulling power out of this, just to be safe, uh, I'm going to leave this in place um, with a transfer limit of disabled. So it'll basically transfer as much as this thing wants into it. Um, now we're going to set up the flux plug. This is for taking power out of this thing. Um, but what I've done here is I've uh, left the limit in place and I've put a transfer limit of 160,000. Um, that may go up a little bit, but I'm only going to pull 160,000 out of this. So I'm going to now say store it. And now if I do this, now I'm putting 160,000 RF per tick into store it. Uh, my store it cloud network, if you will, of power um, from this bad boy. Um, and now this should still be zero. Um, and this should not be going down. So now I'm getting 160,000 and this thing is still powering itself um, and still has a full tank of gas. Um, and that will just make sure that it has enough power on it to keep itself heated up. But now with this thing pulling out 160,000 RF per tick, if we go back home and look at our induction matrix. Um, now you can see that we have a very steady, nice input of over 200,000. Well, there's the 160 if our, uh, if our ender pearls aren't spinning, and then up to around almost well, 239.2 when ender pearls are spinning in our endergenic. Um, and then this output is still relatively high, um, higher than I would like. Um, so our net from this uh, from this uh, fusion generator is not as good as I would like, but again we are using uh, the crappiest fuel. Hydrogen uh, does not create anywhere near as much power as some of the other ones. So if we go nuclear craft, config, fusion configs, uh, power gen, so hydrogen, hydrogen, is that's 442. Um, you can see whatever that is, that's horrible. Um, but deuterium, deuterium is 507. Um, we can get up to, uh, let's see, what's the 10th one in? Looks like the 10th one in is probably the uh, uh, power gen. So that would be... Not sure what that is. Looks like it might not even be in the pack because there's a little dot dot dot. Or no, it's deuterium helium three. Is that right? One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. Deuterium helium three, I think, is the one that's uh one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. So what I can do is we're making deuterium with this bad boy. Um, so if we go back over there, we're generating deuterium at a decent clip and we're also generating deuterium from our um, bank of electrolyzers. Um, I can look into helium-3 production and see what that looks like. Um, and we could potentially uh, switch to like a deuterium helium-3. Let's see, where does helium-3 come from? Helium. Helium-3, nuclear craft. Looks like it's made by a fusion reactor. 
that is running hydrogen deuterium. So probably what we would want to do is switch this guy to hydrogen deuterium. Um, Yeah, let's look at the speeds. Config, fusion configs. So the two things we want to look at are both the uh, power generation, but then also the power duration. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. So it's going to be 250. What's this one at 600? What's the bottom one? 1100. That doesn't consume fuel very fast at all, but does it generate a decent amount of power? No. It generates crap for power. Uh, what about one, two, three, four, five, six up? Two, three, four, five, six up. So that one generates quite a bit of power. And then the duration. One, two, three, four, five, six is still pretty good. So which one is that? One, two, three, four, five, six. That looks like it might be deuterium boron 11. Let's see. Boron 11 thing. There's some boron 11. So we would have to centrifuge molten boron. And we'd have to mine boron. Yeah, that sounds that sounds less fun. I've already got more power than I know what to do with, so I'm not sure why I'm continuing to push this. It's not like we have Draconic Evolution or Environmental Tech or something like that in this mod pack where I need millions and millions of power. Um, just with my Endergenic, uh, I had to turn it off because I had filled up so much power that I didn't have any use for. The only thing I'm really spending power on is making hydrogen to make power. <laughs> so this is a little bit, uh, a little bit of an exercise. All right, well, I'm going to pause again. Uh, as you can see, as this thing creates less and less heat, or, you know, this thing uh, slows down as it gets hotter and also as it gets closer to uh, its uh, normal temperature. Now, one thing you can do, and I want to, want to mention this, not because I like to do it, but because somebody might get the bright idea and they got to be careful. You can get all of this fast to go faster, both the power generation and also the heat to go up faster by uh, tick accelerating that bottom center thing. Um, and so now you can see this is speeding up a little faster, but take a look at my fuel. It's going down. So if you do that, <laughs> you have to make sure that one, you're generating enough fuel, and two, that you are delivering it fast enough that you're not going to um, screw yourself over. So see there it paused and it's now hiccuping um, because the second tank is not getting enough helium. So, and I could probably do that by instead of pumping straight out of here, um, I could use a uh, ender fluid conduit 
to pump out faster. In fact, I could actually probably uh, use multiple inter fluid conduits uh, to really pump stuff out fast. Um, and we could take care of that and we could do some tech acceler tick acceleration. And I have done that in the past when I was feeling impatient. Um, however, I have also tick accelerated the snot out of this um, and then basically powered down <laughs> my um, nuclear core um, because I uh, was uh, trying to accelerate so fast that I couldn't keep the tanks full. So that is both a, uh, uh, a thing you can try, an option for the impatient, but also a warning for the impatient. If you plan to do this, uh, make sure that you have uh, plenty of fuel available and plenty of flow um, through you know multiple conduits if you need to, uh, plenty of flow into uh, your reactor. Otherwise, tick accelerating will just choke you out and turn your reactor off, and that's no fun for anybody. All right, so again, uh, let's see what we're doing on power here. We've got all the power. Um, my 76.8 giga RF uh, backlog is now full again, um, so I'm only inputting as much as I need, so... Um, I guess we could see what happens if I turned off my energetic generator, but let's wait until we hit uh, peak efficiency, efficiency on our um, other guy. All in all, um, if I were to go back in time and do this, I wouldn't bother doing this. Um, the nuclear craft one, not in this mod pack. Unless I am missing something, um, unless there is some mod that does something I want, that takes lots and lots and lots of power. The endogenic one is way more power than I would ever need, and it was way simpler. Uh, I wouldn't say simpler, it was way easier, uh, less resources and less chaos um, to set up the endogenic one. Um, and since I copied someone's design, yes, it was simpler. If I'd tried to do it myself, it might not have been so simple. <laughs> But to get where I am right now, I could have, instead of building the, build that thing, I could have just mirrored this. I could have made a second one of these. Uh, my Ender um, farm is more than able to keep up with uh, Ender Pearl generation uh, for this. Um, I have a backlog of 60,000 uh, Ender Pearls. Um, so in retrospect, I had no idea this thing would be so good. Uh, but in retrospect, uh, I would have planned on just uh, either stopping here or if I decided I did need more power because I found something in this mod pack that needed more power than the, you know, almost 70,000 per tick that this thing generates, I could have just duplicated it. I could have made a second one of these and it would have been a lot cheaper and easier in this mod pack than going the nuclear craft route. So that is something to consider if you are following along at home. That being said, I do like the uh, nuclear craft uh, fusion reactors and I find them interesting and so it doesn't break my heart that I did this. Alright, this is probably going to take like an hour to get to 100%. So I'm going to uh, pause here, go have some food, and uh, we'll come back and take a look at this in a bit. All right, we are back in business. Um, I added a um, fluid module uh, tied to our drum for um, hydrogen um, so I could keep a better eye on hydrogen without running back here all the time. I did lean out a few more things, so um, I uh, pulled more upgrades out of here. So we're down to 20 speed and 20 energy, and that seems to be doing fine. So we got 20 electrolyzers at 20 speed and 20 energy um, to feed this. And I also went through and uh, the hydrogen tank is set at default, which means if it overstuffs, it'll stop the machine. Um, whereas the uh, other two are set at void excess. So deuterium and, uh, and uh, oxygen 
will void it with the hydrogen. Uh, if it fills up with hydrogen, the machine will stop. So this is where the hydrogen comes in, deuterium and oxygen. So that's all set to go. Um, and then if we take a look over in our area. So uh, active cooling, I did go ahead and set up or try to set up some resonant ender cooling because resonant ender cools far better than water. Unfortunately, uh, with the config settings different than I'm used to from Enigmatica 2 Expert, uh, we are at 100% efficiency, and uh, the uh, temperature that it's doing would be like right under 5,000 Kelvin per tick. Um, so we want about 5,000 um, cooling, and the uh, in resonant ender, just one cooling module or cooling active cooler of resonant ender was 5400 K per tick. Uh, so basically resonant ender cools too well for the heat that this thing is running at, uh, which is all fine and good. It just means I don't need to use it, but I did have to make a bit more of the, uh, these guys. Um, so one of these, when it's unbalanced and has water in it, in this mod pack is doing 50, per tick. Um, now if you balance it, it makes it four times better. So if it's balanced by one on the other side of the ring, it'll be 200 per tick. Um, and for balancing, so this one is to the left, uh, or sorry, this one is to the right and on the bottom. So to balance it, we would want one to the left on the top, so this guy. Um, so this guy, that's three to the right on the top is going to be balanced by three to the left on the bottom. Um, so what we have here is we've got three, six, nine, twelve, twenty-four balanced ones. So twenty-four balanced ones times two hundred per tick is forty-eight hundred. Uh, so that got us real close. But then I wanted to, uh, I didn't want another 200. I guess I could have done another 200. Although, because it wouldn't have been balanced. So one um, would have been 200, but you got to make them in pairs. So another pair would have been 400, and we couldn't have that. So we had to break it down into four unbalanced ones. So these two are at 50 each. And they are unbalanced on the top outside here. There's none of no uh, balancing pair out here. And then we've got two here um, that are not balanced out here. So we've got 24 balanced and four unbalanced for a total of 5,000. Um, also, um, it looks like the uh, calculation is uh, this has a base max power of 44,200. Uh, we have a toroid size of 4, and 176,800 just happens to be 4 times the base. Um, so that seems to be uh, how we're predicting what we're doing with the fuels. Um, ideal temperature is at 4415, and we're coming down at minus 13K. So it's at 4415 million, um, and it's coming down at, what is it? Okay, so it's uh, optimal temperature is 4430. Oh, so we're a little below optimal temperature, but that's fine. We're already making, I think, max power. At, uh, at the rate that we're coming down, it's, uh, it's going to take a long time for it to drop to 99%, uh, but I can always come check on it. So there you have it. Um, the only other thing we have to talk about really is that uh, I turned these off, or I should say I turned off my uh, pulling of things into here, so this is now uh, never active for extract mode, to allow the tanks to fill up and to verify that the void output overflow button is working. So it is on and I'm basically throwing away deuterium now. We're going to go ahead and turn this back to always active uh, to drain this out. So 
that'll drain those four tanks into here. The reason I'm doing that is I am up to 11.7 um, in deuterium, so like, I don't know, uh, a decent chunk into the uh, into uh, this uh, tub, and I don't necessarily want to make a bunch more drums, so we're just going to let that, uh, for now, we're going to let this, uh, when this drum fills up, we'll let this stuff just throw things away. Um, and here's what it looks like. That's what it looks like when you're not voiding overflow. There's a little X, a little red X to show that you are not voiding overflow. Um, so we'll turn, leave that on. So if this fills up and I'm not paying attention, this won't shut down. Because this thing will shut down if these are full and this button is deactivated with the little red X on it. So keep that in mind. And you can also do the thing where you uh, have like an overflow into a fluid trash can. Um, that also works. So we are good to go. Uh, if we go back and oh, the other thing is is that uh, we're making uh, about nine nanorads per tick, or that's where we're at in this um, zone. Uh, if we look at the mod options, nuclear craft config, fusion configs, radiation. Uh, we are expecting around five times 10 to the negative nine, so that'd be like, like five nanorads or so. Um, and so that seems about right. Uh, with a little build up set offset by a little bit of DK. Um, so that seems to be good. And this is low enough that I'm probably not gonna just gonna ignore it. I do have the DK rate tweaked up a little bit because I uh, put my base on top of a of a uh, mine shaft without knowing that the mine shaft structure, that pre-generated structure, dungeon-like structure that has all the uh, rails in it and spiders. Um, I didn't know that that actually created um, radiation, so I would not have put my base there had I known, but I don't want to move my base, so I'm tinkering a little bit with the uh, chunk decay rate of radiation to make radiation clear up a little faster uh, so that the low levels of radiation from the mine shaft that I accidentally built my base on top of uh, doesn't cause me all sorts of problems because that would just piss me off. Um, so there you go. We now have um, we now have peak runs of 255.2 um, when we have an interpearl spinning in our endergenic generator. And then when it's not spinning, we're at 178.4. Uh, so that's plenty of power and we're already uh, getting real close to filling back up our huge uh, power battery here. So I'm probably going to let that fill back up and then turn off my endergenics because uh, actually I'm going to go turn that off now before I forget about it. So let's make that ever active. And then I'll just let that run until it runs out. I ain't gonna need it, not unless I find something in this mod pack that takes a heck of a lot more power than the stuff I'm currently doing. Just don't need the tons of power I needed in Enigmatica 2 Expert for things like uh, environmental tech void mining or uh, personal beacons or um, for things like uh, draconic evolution. Just not needing that levels of power here. So I've probably got more than enough power. I probably, before, just with the energetic generator, I probably had more power than I ever need in this mod pack. Um, but now we've got, you know, four times that. So we are in good shape for power. And with that, uh, thanks for watching this overly long uh, video. Um, this is sort of cleaned up now. 20 electrolyzers at 20 speed and 20 energy upgrades. Um, yep, we're all good to go. Thanks for watching. I'll talk to you again next time. Bye.